basically tried to scare me. And the moment it hit me, I started laughing. It was a... See, and I was whispering in the spirit because I'll sometimes pray in the spirit in my mind, not out loud. Other times I whisper, and I'm, my day is starting. I'm on my way to work. I walk. I walk three miles a day. I pray in the spirit the entire time. I, I put in my time in the morning, and I'm just whispering. Suddenly, this neighborhood is dark for no reason, and then suddenly, boom, this thing hit. I just start laughing, and I start praying out loud. I'm like, this is funny funny. And as I'm walking, I'm, I'm son of man, son of God. This is my domain. The earth is inherited by the sons of God. That was my proclamation as I kept walking. I don't care. Try to intimidate and cause me to fear. No way, Jose. <laughs> I just mentioned that to you because this is that time, the season for you to step in, to start taking, I guess you could say a chance. Exercise that which is within you. You are children of the most high God. You know, they would tell us that on the earth, the world would tell us that the most powerful device or the most powerful vessel is an atomic bomb or a hydrogen bomb. And if you can get any information on it, it's basically a, a vessel, a containment that possesses all kinds of material and technology in it. And this particular vessel, whether it is like a Alcom, uh, air launch cruise missile, or if it's one of the other type missiles, it's, it's a vessel that is carrying something in it, plutonium and other stuff, and they say that particular thing is the most powerful thing man knows and understands to exist on the earth. That's what they'll tell you. That is why there is high levels of security for that. There was a time in my life when I used to be responsible for protecting these things. And I'll tell you just how powerful and dangerous uh, these things are. The, the national security level is so high on these that the, they call them post orders. It's the orders that they give you as those of you who are required to protect it. You're on post. You're on duty. And we have all these, these rules of when you can use deadly force and so forth. And, um, you know, if, if, if bodily harm or death is imminent, it's about to happen, you can use deadly force to stop it. Stuff like that, they tell us. But when it comes to nuclear weapons, you have to take a lot of things into consideration. Like say someone is posing threat, but they take a, a, an innocent citizen and they put them in front as a shield, you know they don't shoot the innocent citizen, right? But when it comes to nuclear weapons, the, the orders they gave us was even if the president of the United States is held hostage and put in front of a nuclear weapon that has been stolen, that has been captive, you will shoot through the president to recapture that weapon. That is how important these weapon systems are. That's the kind of instructions we were given. Because these things are so powerful. Now why am I talking about this? Because the reality is that which dwells within you is more powerful than the greatest hydrogen bomb that exists. But not only is it destructive, it is restructive. Yes. The ability to reconstruct, to rebuild, to restore. Anything that comes against you is in opposition to the greatest force in existence. Yes, yes. That light that, was, that is within you cannot be overcome when you have that purity of the love of Christ in you. Hatred cannot overcome it. We've heard things like, we shall overcome. Why do you think Dr. King was so powerful? I never personally met him, but people who have met him that told me that his presence was incredible. That aura Love cannot be conquered. Pure love, the pure light of 
Christ, that pulsating, unbridled, unlimited, unsurpassing force of God, you are beyond a hydrogen bomb. That is why when you come in fulfillment of Isaiah 61, you are able to preach the good news. You are able to tear down strongholds and liberate the captive and set free those that are in prison to heal the sick because the purity of his life within you pushes out and it expels everything else. This is what you contain within you. When we say that you are an ark, when the scriptures say in 1 Peter that you are living stones, these living stones contain within it that light. It is the same light that we see when it talked about Jesus and the seven spirits were upon him and it also talks about how the seven eyes, which was the same thing upon this living stone. And like him, you are living stones. I want you to understand something. The most powerful man to have walked on the face of the earth in absolute perfection is Jesus Christ. The most powerful man have ever walked on the face of the earth and he was the son of God, but you need to stop and recognize that he was man. And as man, he re-engaged you with the father. He reopened a doorway that had been shut because you were originally in the spirit, which is when the scripture says in Genesis that that he walked with God, it says, in the cool of the day. The actual word ruah, what it means is that he walked in the spirit. So when the father came looking for him, Adam, where are you? The reason why he could not see him anymore is because he came in the spirit, in the cool of the day. That's what it meant, in the spirit, in Holy Spirit. But because of what had happened to man, he had been disconnected and man no longer was connected to transcend into the supernatural and the natural. And now this supernatural being was stuck in a natural realm with the inability to open that doorway into the supernatural realm. Because man is that doorway. But because the spirit had lifted off of him, he no longer could walk in the ruah, in the cool of the day. And Jesus came and reestablished. He reestablished the opening of that doorway. And that's why now you have the same glory. See, he came with that glory. He said in John 17, the glory you gave me. That glory that I had from the beginning when I was with you. I now give to them. Mm -hmm. He reopened your door. Yes, he, did. he said, I am the gate. I am the gate. And when you come through me, you can come in and out and find pasture, rest. That's Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You see, he leads me beside still waters. He causes me to lie down in these places of rest, of peace, this pasture place. And he restored. That is the reason why in, in Ephesians, when it says that, that with overwhelming power, he raised him from the dead. And, and we'll, we'll review it in just a moment, but there was four different Realms of power, dunamis, energia, iscus, and kratos. We see these, these realms of power and strength, which Holy Spirit who raised Christ from the dead, if the same Spirit who, who exerted overwhelming power to restore you, 
back to that realm where you are this gateway into this supernatural realm so that now you can see it is a state of consciousness you can see and when you see you become like what you see yes. second corinthians 3 18 beloved we do not know yet meaning that you will know but you do not know yet what we shall be but we know that we shall be like him. Now, listen to me. Whatever you can imagine of who he is, you shall be like him when you see, when you imagine a dimension and a realm in which you see him. So in 2011, you know, I thought I had something going on. I had recovered from a, a backslidden state, a traumatic experience in my life that, that just devastated me. And I had recovered from this, and I, I'd had a long life in the Lord. And now I felt like I was stronger than anything. I had recovered from my, my time of sin and failure because I could not deal with the consequences that I had dealt with. And I, I, I failed at that moment. But I had recovered. I had gone through a cycle in my life where I was now restored and I was feeling more passionate and in love with God than I had ever felt over the course of some 30 something years. I was in love, passionately in love. And, and it was those, those times when I can't get enough of fellowship, of time, of just shut out. I didn't care about having relationships or any other thing else. All I wanted with God, I wanted to know him. Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 10 was so alive to me. Counting everything lost. Mm -hmm. I want to know him. Mm -hmm. And in a moment of fellowship, I saw this vision. I saw flames coming up. And as these flames came up, a tongue of flame would break away. And each tongue started to form a cross. And from the midst of this cross that formed came out a, a fifth flame. And that fifth flame formed a dove. And I heard a quotation he gave me. And he said, from the crucifixion flows the power of the resurrection. And I suddenly realized that I had been resurrected. I had gone through a, a crucifixion experience with Christ. I'd been buried with him and I had been resurrected. And I understood suddenly that Jesus was the Son of Man. Jesus the Christ. The Christ, meaning the anointed one. And when I suddenly realized that I had been anointed just like him and I understood all these other scriptures, I suddenly realized I love and honor and cherish him above all else. But I recognized suddenly, didn't know what it meant at the time, I didn't even know the right word, but the word was equality. Hmm. And at that moment I didn't realize what it was, it took time, but I suddenly realized that the same spirit, the same spirit that rested upon him, I suddenly realized that he did nothing in his deity but everything in his humanity. And it was that power of the Holy Spirit, the scripture that said, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit came alive to me. And at that moment, I suddenly realized, now I love my Lord so much that all I wanted to do was learn more about him. I wanted to read the scripture over and over and over and over again and see everything that my Christ had done and what he had become. Because I suddenly realized the more I could learn him and know him and understand him, the more I could understand what is capable within me. I suddenly realized that Christ in me was the hope. The Christ in me was the hope of glory. And as he is, so are we. And that's when I started to now wrestle with things because I realized 
I, my mind was blown away, and I, I, I like, wait a minute, could this be? It, are we that extraordinary of a creation? How is it? And at that moment, that's when I suddenly realized that everything was possible, even what I still did not know was possible was possible, but I needed to come to the consciousness of what was possible. Because my life had just been transformed instantaneously by one revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The same revelation that God gave him in Revelation 1. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave him. It's the same one that Paul talks about in Galatians. When he says, all of this ministry that you see of me, nobody taught me this word. Paul spent three years. He left after he got saved three years. And then he comes back for two, week, two weeks into Jerusalem. He meets with a few of the apostles and he leaves again for 14 more years. This is a man who had been well studied. He knew the scriptures. He, he engulfed himself in it. And even with all that, it took him another 17 years. And he said it was during that time frame when nobody taught me this, but it was the revelation of Jesus Christ. Who is he? Because when you can see who he really is, then you see that you are one with him. For as many as are joined to him are one spirit. So you are an atomic bomb, but you don't come for destruction. You are a terror to the enemy. You need to understand that God is a terrible God. If you get on the wrong side of this God, he will protect you with such incredible vengeance. And although it is not popular today to speak of this, I will tell you most assuredly, do not touch my anointed ones. And each one of you are anointed. I don't want to speak of fear to try and cause someone to tremble. I never desire a demise of a person. Never. But there have been times when I have even been told, do not pray. Because the opposition of that one person went too far. And Ananias and Sapphira, we see what happened to them in Acts. We do not seek this for anybody, but we seek the restoration of all. And we struggle and we try to get them reconciled back to Christ through Holy Spirit. Because you can do nothing. There is not a single person on the planet that you can teach a single thing. You can recite scriptures. You can recite teachings. But without the Holy Spirit to give revelation, it just goes right over them. The scripture says, to as many as he was sent. Ponder that for a moment. Jesus Christ, to as many as he was sent. As many, meaning he wasn't sent to all. That's why he said, let him who has an ear to hear, let him hear. That's why it said when they wanted to take him and they wanted to elevate him to be king, he would not entrust himself to the people because he knew what was in them. He didn't come for them all. That's why he spoke in parables. He said, because see, their hearts are so out there. They're so full of darkness. They won't get it. But you, I can speak a simple word of life. And that word of life, you'll grab it. And someone sitting right next to you will not because they are not of the fold. Mm. Who are you? It doesn't, it doesn't matter about you. It's about him. Yes, it is. Always. Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit are the most humble I have ever encountered in my life. When I look at the scriptures and I see that here is he who was from the beginning, one with God. Everything was created by him. It came out of him. When you ponder and you think, if you created something, if you created a company and you were the CEO, the owner 
100% is yours and you hire some staff members and they come in here and just totally disrespect you, I'm sure you would terminate them immediately. And you're just a CEO of a company. But here you have the supreme being, the creator of everything, humbling himself, taking on the form, the likeness of man. He became like his brethren, the scripture says, he became just like you. No different, exposed to everything you're exposed to. And in his humbleness, he was ultimately obedient to God. It was Holy Spirit, see the seven spirits, understanding, wisdom, knowledge, counsel, might, the fear of the Lord, is what enables you to be able to do everything. He said, I did not come on my own authority. This man, when he was on the boat and they were trembling, he speaks to the winds and he says, peace, be still. And the men interestingly say, what manner of man? What kind of man? They didn't say what kind of a God. They said what, what kind of a man, although they had already previously said you are the son of God. They said, what kind of man? See, the thing is, is they had been living with this guy. They had been touching this guy. This is a physical person. I, I can touch this person. So although I am witnessing all the tremendous things that this man is doing, I can physically touch him. And, and when he suddenly gets hungry, I see him hunger. And when he, his legs are tired from that long walk and he has to sit down and the Samaritan woman is there and they're seeing this man who they realize is the son of God, but he is suffering like man. And then this man, so you imagine they're, they're, they're struggling with this deity, man, deity, man, and they're still trying to balance out what is this that we're dealing with. And then this man speaks and says, peace, be still. And they said, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? They were coming to a new reality, a new consciousness of this man. They were being exposed to something. And it was shaking up the world. Mm -hmm. You see, we were changing from one age to another. We were coming out of the age of the ram, the age of the priestly sacrifice of a ram, and going into the age of Pisces. Things were changing, religion was changing, and the way people thought religiously was changing, just like we have now entered the age of Aquarius, and the time of the Pisces is changing, and now we are entering into the, the time of kingdom. Mm. That's why you're being stirred up with kingship yes. within you, with sonship in you, with identity with him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are beginning to identify yourself with him. We know that they wanted to stone him. And he said, for what good work? Now, mind you, he was doing good works. He said, my father continuously worked. He's always been working, and therefore I'm going to continue to work. When they heard him say, my father, they wanted to stone him. He said, for what good work do you want to stone me? And they said, not for a good work, but because you, you claim that God is your father. In other words, if you claim he is your father, you're saying you are equal with him. All of you at one point in your life have said, Father, Abba, Father. So you are claiming to be equal with him. And they said, but you are only a man. See, they had not had the revelation yet. Stop and absorb that in for a moment. That equality that you have. Paul says that Jesus Christ did not find it. Robbery. He did not find it robbery. He's talking about the man, the son of man. Did not find it robbery to be considered equal. He's still God most high. 
We don't dishonor him. When the scripture says that with the, if the two are joined to him, those that are joined to him are one spirit. You're joined to him. There's an equality there. And that's why in John 17, when Jesus starts that, that long prayer in the beginning, somewhere around verse 3 or 4, he talks about that glory that I had with you. And then later on, somewhere around the 17th or the 21st verse, I, I have it written down. But in there he says, the same glory you gave me, I give to them, that they may be one in me. So now we're one with Jesus Christ, just like you and I are one. So now we're one with the Father, that they may be perfect in one. And so I want to talk to you about being perfect. Amen. You can be perfect. Jesus said, be ye perfect. Therefore, even as your father is perfect, he would not tell you to do something you could not be. That perfection is a state of maturity. It is a state of consciousness. The scriptures say that it was by the eternal spirit. By Holy Spirit, Jesus offered himself up as a sacrifice without blemish, without spot. And it goes on to say that if that blood, through that blood of Jesus Christ, through whom the Holy Spirit enabled him, Jesus was able to do it through the Holy Spirit. He was able to live a life of holiness through the Holy Spirit so that he could offer himself up without these blemishes and spots through Holy Spirit. And the scripture says those that walk in the spirit would not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's what we're talking about. It is a harmony. It is a submission. It is a oneness with him that causes this transformation within you. See, Jesus, because he had this spirit, he was able to take captive every thought and imagination that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. He was able to subdue those emotions, be angry, but sin not, so that he could keep himself aligned with the will of God, so that when he faced his most darkest moment and he's asking his, his closest companions to pray with him, and he's in that garden, and he's struggling. He struggled. Your Lord and your Savior struggled. He loved you, but he saw the truth of what he was about to experience. And he was crying out to God, this, this, this incredible man is now confronted with the most challenging thing of his life and at that moment three times he cries out is there another way this is the God who always heard him when he raised Lazarus from the dead he prayed and he said father I thank you that you hear me in other words he had already prayed and he was saying that for the people to hear I thank you that you hear me this this man had always, God had always heard his prayer. It was nothing that he ever lacked. He needed to pay the tax in the temple, and so he calls forth a coin in, in the mouth of a fish. He needed bread, he multiplied, he called creation to gather itself and multiply the bread. This is a man who had always had these answers. He had always been 100% obedient, and now he is faced with his most challenging experience of his life. And as he's crying out, the stress level, when you think you are under stress, oh, the stress level is so powerful, so overwhelming that he starts sweating drops of blood, and science knows that those vessels can pop when you're under so much stress. And some of you, like I, have had experiences where I got migraines because of the stress that I was in. And it was the peace of God that gave me my healing. And here is this Christ. He has been perfectly humble and obedient to his God, his Father. He's here on a mission. 
He was sent. And he says, is there another way? He says, I don't want to do it. He said, I don't want to do it. He said, not my will. In other words, my will. I do not want to go through this experience, God. But I know that I have to go through this. And so not my will, but yours be done. And there are times when you were called to be the Christ to someone. He is the Christ, but you are a Christ too. You as well are as anointed and you are one with him. So there are times when he sends you somewhere. And in that spirit of Christ, you as well will be confronted with things and you say, not my will, but yours be done. And then through that experience, you experience the overwhelming power of the resurrection, the dunamis, the energy, is the greatest power of God, the might is demonstrated in you. And when you're walking in that realm of harmony and oneness with God, that pulsating power of God comes off of you and it changes everything. That's why they couldn't arrest him until he said, okay. They came to arrest him. They couldn't arrest him because he had not given the word. He was walking in that realm. There was no difference between him and you. I think it was 66 times that he himself, the scripture said, the son of man in the New Testament, he was emphasizing it over and over and over again. That's why he said the things that I do, you shall do. These signs shall follow them that believe. The things that I do, even you shall do even greater. There's no difference. God is so secure with himself that he can give of himself completely to you. See, he's not like man is, where man is afraid to expose himself. Man is afraid to open up his treasury to someone else because he'll be taken advantage of God. doesn't care like that. He doesn't think that way. He's always given. He's never held back. That is the definition of true, perfect love. He has never held back anything from you. He has always taken his full, greatest essence, his own breath. And he breathed into you and caused you to become a living being. He gave his son and then he gave the promised Holy Spirit. He has never withheld anything. You are that precious and unique. That is why demons tremble. That's why the fallen council members, the fallen angels are fearful that this revelation be captured by you. Mm -hmm. That the eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your heart would suddenly see who you are. Yes, yes. So it said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. He has anointed me. The Christ led the way. He was the first. You see, we've only had two Adams. The first Adam and the second Adam. And he was the firstborn. The first. So there was more after him. He was the incorruptible seed. And after him, we came. I don't know what my number is. I know I wasn't number two. Because that was 2,000 years ago. But I know I got a number. And I might not know what the number is, but I got a number. I'm identified in heaven. I'm identified in the supernatural realm. That is why when uh, the, the, the sons of Sceva, they were trying to cast out in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, those demons spoke back to them and said, Paul, we know, Jesus, we know, but who are you? You're not registered. You're, you're an undocumented alien in this realm right here. You're trying to step into the supernatural realm and you don't have a passport. Let me see your passport. But here's the reality of it. You are documented. You may not realize it. See, a lot of us don't realize what we're entitled to. We don't realize that. That's why Paul said in Ephesians 1, 17 to 23, he says, I pray to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. 
that the eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your heart would be opened, that you would understand the full depth of the inheritance of the glory of God that is within you. Because you don't realize. You see, you want to say, hey, while well, I'm a billionaire, this guy's a billionaire. You want to name people who are billionaires. You're so far beyond that, it's ridiculous. There's not even a word, a trillionaire, gazillionaire, whatever you want to name. It doesn't even come to, to compare to who you are. Because however you want to weigh the economy systems of the world, there is an economy that far surpasses it. And that is the economy in the supernatural realm. Because economy is run off of currency, which is what we call dollars. The currency that is the greatest currency is the currency of Holy Spirit. He is that vibration that was hovering over the waters of the deep. And that dwells within you, that pulsating, unbridled force that could not be stopped. It's an unquenchable fire. We, I can throw all kinds of words to you, but that's what dwells within you. You have that currency in you. That's your economic realm, your economic system you dwell in, but yet you're allowing yourself to be oppressed. Jesus. Not realizing you can go to the bank and you have an account, don't even realize you have an account. And you walk in there and your biometric scan, they put your fingerprint or your eye and they scan it and suddenly you don't even realize it, but boom. You got an account number pops up and it says this is what's available to you and you don't even realize it because you're looking at this thing and trying to figure out well, what is all this jibber jabber in here i see this this statement of my account but what is in there <laughs> and until you start looking at the statement and start getting the interpretation the revelation of what is actually written in my account you will not make a withdrawal on that and so you want some pastor man to come pray for you not understanding that you don't need that Because it is already within you. That is why you have the ability to speak. Yes, sir. It is within you. Yes, sir. That overwhelming force, it is within you. Yes. So who are you? What is man? I've tried to cover this in the last several times that I've, I've spoken and I've told you simple things, and I'm, I'm just going to end this because I, I, I can't go too much further in this time constraint. I didn't even get past page one of my notes. I've told you before how the word make, in the Hebrew, when he says, let us make man, that word make, the basic definition of it is accomplish. So he's saying, let us accomplish man. But when you look at the actual letters, and each letter means something very symbolic, and so you decipher what it is, and based upon its shape, it's got a pictorial meaning, and it also has a numerical value, which means something as well. <clears throat> so when you look at the word make, what it's really saying when he said, let us make or let us accomplish man. So what is he accomplishing? What is being accomplished? This is what is being accomplished. Insight and consciousness through the flow of the pulsating, unbridled force of God, which is his glory. Holy Spirit projected into physical existence bringing completion and fullness and perfection maturity you see you're, you're being matured you're being matured you're going through a maturing process bringing completion fullness and perfection through the totality of an overall process until we behold the power of being God's self-expression through the planting of his seed. That's what, when I take those letters and I find what the definitions is, the inner meaning for each letter, that's the whole statement there, just for those three letters. Those three letters, which are the ayin, the shin, and the hay. And I'll share this one last thing and then we'll wrap it up. So he says, let us make... Man, so we just saw what it said to make man. Well, what is man? Man has three letters, the Aleph, the Dalit, and the Mem. The basic meanings of them is the Aleph is the pulsating force. The Dalit means door or gate. And the Mem is perfection and completion. But when you read the whole thing together, it means a pulsating unbridled force of God. 
His glory, His Spirit, through a door, a gate, a portal, an entrance through which the humble enter into and real the realization of God's dwelling place where perfection and completion is projected into time and conditioned physical existence. That is what man is. You are this doorway. The pulsating force of God is in you. And through this doorway, he can project himself, a self-expression. You are actually through a training program. See, every single one of you have been through different levels of education in the world system. And what that education was trying to do was prepare you. And until you learned how to do mathematics, you couldn't add. Until you learned a specific trade like mechanics, you couldn't fix a car. But suddenly you're walking around, you're saying, I'm a mechanic. How is it you're a mechanic? Well, I went through the training process. I learned it. So before you went through the training process, was that ability already in you? Of course it was. You just had not been trained yet. Nothing changed except for your consciousness, mm -hmm. your awareness of how to do what you had to do. But once you went through that training and you got the knowledge, you got the understanding, you got the certifications, you now knew. See, there are people that have never been through a school, but they've been taught by their pappy, a brother, a friend, and they can fix a car better than anybody else, but they learned. And that's what you're going through. An experience of life they're bringing to the consciousness of who you really are and what dwells in you and what you are capable of doing. That is why Jesus said, all power and authority has been given unto me. Now, just the same way the Father sent me, look at what I did. He says, for I have now showed you an example. The same way he said to the Father in John 17, now I send them. The same way you sent me. Same. Not different. Same. I send you. There's not an ocean you can't part. There's not a mountain you can't move. And that's why he said, if only you'd believe. See, creation will respond to you just like that coin formed in the mouth of a fish. It will respond to you. But we don't come exerting it. Look, I'm a big, bad dude here. Jesus was humble. He was the son of God. He was a king of kings and lord of lords. He was high priest. But yet he was humble. Holy Spirit is Holy Spirit. You cannot take that from him. But yet, even he, Jesus said, he would not come in his own. But he will take what is mine and reveal it to you. So here you have the Son of God who is just extraordinarily incredible. Totally humble. He's not exalting himself. And that's why he said you. He says, you don't be like the Gentiles who exert themselves and they take their authority and try to make people servants. But he says, you be the servant of them. You be the last. Even though you are supreme. But you do not walk in fear. And when necessary, you will speak a word that will bring an end to a situation. You will exert that power when it's necessary. But you do it being led by the Spirit. Because what we come to do is the Isaiah 61 stuff. We come to heal the sick, to liberate the captives, to heal the brokenhearted. And so we come just like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, being sons with so much power and authority in us, but yet humbled. We don't see ourselves better than the next person. And my anointing is this or that. We are just sons. and We see ourselves and each other as equal. And we work together to help our brethren and if you think you're spiritual then restore your brother that's what you are a king and a priest he has made us kings and priests but not to walk around all high and mighty arrogant but humble confident confident knowing who you are I don't go and I tempt faith I don't go in there and attempt disasters but I'm not afraid of them 
I listen and I walk and I go where I got to go. So when I'm in my neighborhood and suddenly them things try to appear to me, Come on. I came here legally. I didn't trespass. Come on. I didn't force myself into a neighborhood I shouldn't have been in. I went through the whole legal process and bought that house. I own that house now. So I have dominion here. And if anything else that wants to dwell against here, go ahead. Dwell all you want. If another creature, another person invites a spirit into my neighborhood, fine, because they have authority as creatures as well, but you will not interfere with me. And if I am called upon, I will cast that demon out and I will cause it to leave. Because I have authority over that domain. But I don't walk around speaking in tongues and trying to tell everybody I'm a big, bad, mamma jamma Christian man. I'm a king, don't you know it? I'm blessed and highly favored. I understand these things, but it's not something for me to exert and try to boast upon. I come in humility because I come as a priest of God Most High on the mission to reconcile. Reconcile them back to the Father. And then after that, I allow him, his love and his light to exude off of me in order to restore. Because first we reconcile them unto the Father and then we allow that essence of who he is in us to come out of us and cause them to be awakened to a new reality that causes them to be restored to like, what? What? You mean I am wealthy? I am a child of the king? And that comes not by me preaching at them, but by me living and letting that light dwell in me. And all along, I don't trespass on anybody's territory, but don't get things twisted. I have power. Yes, you have power. Yes, and there is no power higher than the power you have. Because Jesus said, all authority and power has been given unto me. Therefore, go, meaning he's not commissioned you to go the same way he did. So now... You just talk to people. And at times, the opportunity will arise for you to speak into the life. And when they open up that door and they say, now pray for me. Yes, pray for me, brother. Pray for me. At that point, now this deity, this person who has authority over their life, who is experiencing something terrible, a disease, a sickness, or some kind of oppression, they have now opened up authority to you. See, they opened up authority and that's why they're having something manifest in their life. They gave something access. They gave something access into the life and they're experiencing something bad and they may be in prison. Yeah. Mm. It's true. But the moment you have now gained their trust and they say to me, pray for me. At that point, this deity, this person who has total authority over their life now opens up the door for you to come in and override what was oppressing them. And now that's when you come in and say, ha! Ha ha! Devil, you have lost because, see, you had convinced that person just like you convinced Eve. You deceived Eve, and now you deceive this person. They're living with that circumstance in their life, and they have the authority to allow that into their life. But now, because of your witness, whether it was a day, an hour, or weeks, or months, they've opened up the door to you. And so now you can come understanding that legally, legally, if I'm in a building, I'm at the entrance of a building, and the owner of that building is right there, and that owner is telling me, I have some squatters in here. They are trespassing and they're living in my building. And I had allowed them to come in. But now I want them out and I can't get them to leave. I don't have the power to do it. And they call me and they show me the proof. They definitely own this building. They have full authority and they give it over to me. Now I have been given the authority by the owner who has the title deed to not evict those people. That's the